Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.4.1 to the public. iOS 17.4.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone and even showed up if you had betas turned on or off. I'll talk about that in a moment, but along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 17.4.1, VisionOS 1.1.1, as well as a couple older updates with iOS 16.7.7 and iPadOS 16.7.7. So far, there's no watch OS, Mac OS, TV OS, or HomePod OS update just yet. And when I say this is multiple sizes, if you don't have the betas turned on, you would see this coming at 406.5 megabytes or around that size, about 350 to 450. And depending on how you installed it, you might see 6.46 gigabytes or something along those lines. If you had the beta turned on, this should be the same build and same everything. And let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and then talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 21 E two, three, six. And this particular build does have a new modem update. So if you're on a 15 pro or 15 pro max, you should see it bump up to version 1.55.04 on other devices. It may be another update, but but either way, we should have an, a modem update that should help with overall connectivity with cellular networks. As far as new features, well, if we go back to the release notes here, it says the update provides important bug fixes and security updates and is recommended for all users. What that means specifically, I really wish Apple would clarify. However, I've gone through recent bugs and taken a look at them to see if they've fixed some things. So, so far I've seen no keyboard lag. So if we go into notes, this is a new note and it seems to be very fast. So it looks like it's working as you would expect here. Also, if we were playing music, maybe using the dynamic Island, swiping home, everything seems to be nice and smooth here. So it looks like they've looked at performance a little bit. We'll talk about that in a moment, but also there were some other bugs that will take some time to actually know if they're fixed. For example, there were issues with the alarms not going off for some people. So if you have an alarm set up, to actually wake you up in the morning. Sometimes it just wouldn't sound. This happened to myself. This happened to my wife and many of you reported this as well. After a few days, there were slowdowns and stutters. There was rebooting overnight, false Siri activations, and much more, even resprings and crashes for some people and home controls, not working volume sliders and other things. It will take a few days to know if they've actually fixed this, but I really wish Apple would give more information. If we go to their release notes page, you'll see here that they have just view downloads. There's not even release notes for this update. So this is a little odd and I really wish they would give it more information just to let us know what they've actually fixed. So we're waiting to see if they've fixed those bugs. I do know that the wallpaper dimming bug does seem to be there. And of course they've fixed the notification bug and it has not returned, which is great, but the overall dimming bug is there. It did take me some time to reproduce it though. It seemed to actually show up after a while. As far as security updates, well, this is something else that's a little different this time around. If we go to Apple's security website and then we scroll down, what you'll see is it actually says iOS 17.4.1 and then the other updates from today. And it says details coming soon. This is often when maybe they have some major security updates and they're going to release some other updates, maybe Mac OS or watch OS later on or they just want everyone to install it first to make sure some of those updates or issues with the previous version are not exploited. However, this is something we've seen before. They'll update this over time and sometimes it takes hours. Sometimes it takes days and even weeks, depending on when they feel they need to update it or when they can. So hopefully we'll get more information about that very soon. As far as other updates, Apple updated air tags the other day to version 2.0.73. However, they haven't updated their website with this yet saying what's in it, but it's probably just going to say bug fixes and other improvements, and it rolls out slowly. There's no manual way to go ahead and update them. They'll just update over time. Also something else they released that's brand new is a new website that has some manuals, specs, and downloads of all of their products. So if you want to see more information, say about iPhone, then we'll go to iPhone, go to iPhone 15 pro max, and then you have the user guide, the repair manual, more information and the tech specs as well. And also the year it was introduced. So this is a really helpful reference website, giving different things such as the finish that was available, the capacities, size, and more. So this is great. It's just one place to find all of that information and I'll link it in the description below. Apple also released a new ad today promoting the iPhone 15 pro. 
If we go to YouTube and on Apple's YouTube channel, you'll see it says, don't let me go iPhone 15 storage, sort of promoting that iPhone 15 has more than enough storage for all of your photos and more. However, that is if you buy the right capacity. So they do, if you buy the one terabyte option or 512 or whatever works for you. Now, as far as the overall performance, well, so far it's actually been pretty good. Of course, this does take a few days to measure, but the good news is it seems to be very smooth and very fast overall. Everything seems to be as expected where for some people it was sort of slowing down. They could reboot their device and it would act as you would expect after that. But so far it seems nice and smooth going into things such as the control center, swiping back and forth. Everything is nice and fast as you would expect. As far as the overall heat of the device, well, that seems to be pretty good as well. Of course, right after you install an update, it's going to get a little bit warm. That's completely normal, but it cooled down fast for those of you that are concerned. I know iOS 17.4 had a lot of odd issues like that. So if we take a look at both of these, they're both running this version. We'll see if both of them have heated up at all using the thermal camera. On the 15 Pro Max that I was holding at the hottest point, it's about 30 to 31 degrees Celsius. On the one that was sitting idle, it's about 28 degrees Celsius. And again, in Fahrenheit, that's about 89 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the one that's sitting idle at about 84 degrees Fahrenheit. So both are doing quite well. No issues there. That's a great sign since it was even warmer than that just on my weekend video while I was using it in that video. And we just installed an update. So that's a great sign for those of you concerned with that and having it overheat in very hot environments. As far as battery health and battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at the settings. We'll go to battery. Battery health is normal. And if we go into that, you'll see I have 138 cycles and I finally dropped to 99%. I was at 100% a day or two ago, the last time I checked it for some of the videos, and that's completely normal. It's going to drop, all batteries deteriorate or sort of degrade over time, and it's completely normal. Some people were seeing this happen after about 25 cycles even. So this is well within range, 80% after a thousand cycles on the 15 Pro Max is what Apple says to expect. On other phones, not the 15 series phones, you can expect 500 cycles down to 80%. As far as battery life over the past few days, well on 17.4, it actually seemed to get worse over time. So you'll see it starts to actually pick up with it and it just hasn't been great. So only two hours and 57 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 30 minutes of screen idle time. And I used about 60 to 65% of my battery today. I've had an hour and 44 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 45 minutes of screen idle time. And I'm down to 66%. It always takes a few days to measure this as there's processes that need to happen in the background indexing and more. But after that, we should be able to actually determine if battery has improved. But again, it takes a few days to measure and we'll talk about it in the week and follow up video as well. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.4.1, well, I would definitely recommend it if you're having a poor experience on 17.4 as it's supposed to have a ton of bug fixes. However, hopefully Apple gives us what that information is and what the bug fixes actually are, but it seems to be improved so far, at least in the heat part of the device and just speed in general. So I would say it's a good update, but we won't know what the security updates are for a few days. As far as the next release, iOS 17.5 beta one could be as soon as tomorrow or probably next week. Many people suspected new iPads next week, and we may or may not get those. But if we do, that's when we could see maybe that update. Maybe we won't have iPads at all for a while, but iOS 17.5 beta one should either be tomorrow, which is odd for a Friday or probably Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Then maybe a release date of that later in April or early May. Apple's already working on iOS 17.6 and later versions of iOS 18. So iOS 18 is expected to be shown in June, probably the first week. We'll hear about WWDC as far as when they're having that take place. And then we'll get invites later on for that as well. As far as overall benchmarks, well, I did run those right after installing the update, so they probably will go up, but they're pretty good so far. I have 2,914 for single core, 7,194 for multi-core. Right after installing an update, that's pretty good overall, and you'll see it's well within range of what we had this past weekend. In fact, it even beats 17.4 as far as the multi-core, and I just installed it. So hopefully this improves even more, but it's well within range of what I would expect for this overall device, maybe a little bit lower for others, but let me know your experience in the comments below. So that's everything so far in iOS 17.4.1. If you've noticed any other bug fixes or different features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.